Peace fam. Uh, there's some things you need to have in your weight management regimen. And these things will help you on your journey to a better eating and better long-term weight management. Now the reason I named these things and that you should have them is because if you have problems sticking to fat loss regimens or so-called diets, one of the main reasons that this happens is because you're trying to do them after years of eating meat, sweets, and pastries in wheat. Dr. Layla Afra already broke down to us how stress in life makes the part of the brain that needs sugar signal the body to consume more sweets in order to counter or offset that depression. Okay, so it's almost like a natural phenomenon at this time. We as melanated folk are prone to depression by default of usually having more stressful lives. And that's, that's data supported fact. Our bodies are more susceptible to sugar burnout over time, which is exactly what carbs and sugar do to the body. The mechanisms that process sugar become damaged and burned out, basically like a discharged battery. And, you know, the body simply can't do the tasks that it used to be able to do in terms of processing sugar or processing carbs in general, not just sugars. The high carb Western diet burns out the machinery, so to speak, and we end up needing artificial devices like insulin, blood pressure medication, or some other synthetic form of what we're supposed to have naturally. Our addictions make fat loss programs more difficult because not only do you have to adjust to a different eating style, you have to fight cravings that go beyond physical but are associated with mental desire and sort of like the voids in your life. This is why sugar addiction is so common and people don't take it serious enough because it's a pleasurable and pretty much by and large accepted vice. We already know that the same receptors in the brain that receive the stimulation effect from things like heroin or cocaine um, those are the same receptors that receive the stimulation from sugar. But most people just don't take the comparable power seriously. So how do we counter this when we go on an intake that reduces or eliminates sugar? What alternative sources of foods do we use to replace our usual pleasures in terms of eating? Specifically sugars and carbs and generally from the so-called diet. You can use sweeteners like stevia, monk fruit, xylitol, erythritol, yacon syrup, and nut butters. These are some very important tools to wean yourself off the sugar cravings, and I'm talking from direct experience. If you have a replacement for your sugar cravings, you can fairly easily re replace your sugar intake with the non-calorie and or non-insulin impact alternative. Now you still have to curb your food intake depending on how bad you are. Um, for example, if you if you love lemon meringue pie, there's not much in the way of alternative ingredients that will help you make a pie that you can eat that'll keep your insulin and sugar levels under control. Same thing with the soda addiction. A lot of people are addicted to the combination of carbonation and sugar. And not a lot of brands use safe sweeteners like stevia. Most use aspartame or um, asulfame because of their complement to the acidic taste of carbonated beverages. But the sugar alternative can still be a huge help in replacing moderately sweet and simple dishes and snacks. As you probably know, stevia is my go-to sweetener. The only thing I, I can think of that may be a barrier uh, in your being able to use it is the aftertaste which I'm thoroughly used to. Out of all the sweeteners, I stayed with stevia because it is the least processed, or you can get it in a least processed form uh, of, of low calorie sweetener or no calorie sweetener. You can either or, depending on what they mix it with. Of all the ones on the market, to me, that is the best or second best. I haven't tried monk fruit and I'm trying that currently. But the others are still derived from natural sources and they can undergo a little more processing than stevia or monk fruit and they usually do and sometimes they get them from not so natural sources. Now I use stevia extract for most of my foods but for coffee, herbal teas and baking I tend to use what's called Truvia um, which I have reduced to just using that for my coffee because pure stevia leaf just does not go well with coffee. 
However, concerning the Truvia, I found out some not so cool facts about it, and I'll reveal that in another video. It's not poison, but the process in making it I found was a little deceptive. Even, even when I went to the NSF non-GMO protocol, the method was spelled out clearly, but still the amount of digging I had to do was a problem for me. But I'll get into that later. Monk fruit is another natural sweetener that will help you transition from sugar. It's healthy with no known side effects or adverse health effects. Now, monk fruit also has what are called morgocides, which actually have an antioxidant effect in the body. This effect prompted me to start using it, but I don't have a lot of experience with it as of yet uh, since, like I said, my go-to is stevia, so I have to see how it pans out for me. But if the studies and reviews are authentic, then it's most likely the best choice of all the sweetness I've listed. It does have a slight aftertaste from what I understand. <clears throat> but again, I'll, uh, I'll uh, give a review on that later. Yay Con Syrup, or your Con Syrup, is something I'm trying out now on several different products. And I'll give my review on that also in a later video. It's not totally calorie free. Um, you can actually rack up on some carbs if you use too much. But for a product that is capable of replacing syrup, um, to that degree, the carbs are very negligible. This is a good replacement tool to reduce carbs and sugars. And I'll have more information on it later after I use it for a while. Erythritol is produced by using glucose hydrolyzed from corn and then fermenting that glucose source with an engineered yeast. Now the yeast may be GMO, but the resulting product from the fermentation may or, not, may or may not be considered a GMO product. That all depends on the specific yeast used and how the state defines that strain. Some strains can be engineered and the state will define it as, or the state will define the product as a result of the yeast fermentation as non-GMO, and they still do that. It's a slippery slope, as I'm finding out, but even some products I use are made that way. Um, but some revisions are underway, trust me. Uh, but you can still get uh, non-GMO urethritol if you look hard enough. Xylitol is made in a similar fashion, but it's processed from wood or plant matter waste and waste products from wheat, rice, and maize. An extract called xylan is taken from the matter and hydrolyzed into xylose and from there purified into xylitol. Xylitol what I found is banned from certain uses in several European countries. So even though it is documented as a natural substance, since the primary source can be waste matter, I don't deal with it. You can also get non-GMO xylitol. These substitute sugars will go a long way in helping you deal with your sugar cravings, allowing you to make a select number of snack dishes like brownies, cakes, etc. Though some of them are highly processed and use engineered steps in conjunction with natural ingredients, I still list them here just so you have a full view of your options. And for the fact that if you look hard enough, you will find authentic non-GMO forms of things like xylitol, erythritol, and stevia. Almond flour is another tool that's powerful in fighting off the sugar demons. Um, you can replace your traditional high calorie, high glycemic, hunger-inducing wheat flours without too much in the way of sacrificing texture and palatability and actually adding a more nutritional profile to your bakeries and other cooking dishes. Coconut milk is priceless in a way that it can replace milk in almost any food application. Wherever you can use milk, you can almost always use coconut milk without a sacrifice in taste. The only problem people have with this alternative is the fat content, which is, which is, it is considerable. But if you have any sense of timing your meals, or even better, if you're in keto, then that's relatively minor in terms of a problem. Nut butters are invaluable, and you will truly appreciate how much variety you can bring to your intake when you use them. Shakes with pistachio butter taste totally different than shakes with almond butter. Even when all other ingredients are the same, some nut butters turn a simple shake into a meal or make a bland piece of rice cake a sweet tasting snack. I mix and match them with everything from different shakes to swirling them into my proteins um, using the protein, the nut butter, coconut milk, and chopped nuts and make little fat bombs or little fat protein bombs I call them 
and eat them just like that. Buying ready-made keto snacks is also another great way to, to tame cravings. And the good news is that every day there are new, tastier snacks coming out of the market each and every day, I'm telling you. The choices for sugar-free, carb-free desserts and snack dishes are becoming just as vast as the sugar options. So I hope all of this information helps you. Till next video, peace. If you learned from this video, help support the study and time to bring this knowledge to our community. It does take time and effort to be concise and as accurate as possible so that we can stay abreast of important health information and techniques. Please visit the site and follow these links.